Hey guys, what's up? It's Deanne and today we're going to talk about antique china portrait plates. So these plates are very collectible and they generally have a portrait in the center and it's not always a portrait of a person. Sometimes you'll see animals or you'll see naturalistic images like flowers and plants and all sorts of different types of things that are decorative. So this particular plate is a portrait plate of a lady and it's an Art Nouveau style lady. And uh, it's really, really quite lovely. And 99% of these type of plates were made in Europe. So for the most part, most of these plates were made in England, Germany, France, and Austria. And the most popular factories making these type of plates were Spode, Wedgwood, Limoges, Sevres, Meissen, Dresden, KPM, and Royal Vienna. So if you have one of these plates, how to identify it is um, by actually turning the plate over. And if you want to do research on it, look for a back stamp mark on the back of the plate. Now, impressed marks were generally pressed into the surface. So they were impressed before 1899. And if you see a printed stamp and mark, they generally mean that your plate was made after 1900. If you have an English one, um, on the back, it would have the word trademark. That would indicate it was made from 1855 and on. If you see LTD was added to an English manufacturing company's name, that usually began in 1886 and after. Now, if there's no country of origin written anywhere on the plate, the plate was probably made before 1891 when the McKinley Tariff Act actually made it such that it was the law to have it commercially imported with the names of the country of origin on the back. Now, it didn't have to have a name brand. It just had to say the country of origin. Like, for example, it would say France. It would say Germany. Now, the most popular ones I noticed um, that go for good money happened to be by Royal Vienna. And they were a factory making these china plates in about the 18... 90s or so, probably the very late 1880s, all the way up through the early 20th century. Now, Royal Vienna's mark was a beehive. So it would be like a blue beehive mark. And a lot of people think that anything with a blue beehive mark is made by Royal Vienna. That's untrue. Other companies actually were counterfeiting the Royal Vienna mark on the backs of their plates. So a lot of them would have a blue beehive mark but the thing was, was that the blue beehive mark was a counterfeit and fraudulent mark. Now, Royal Vienna sued a lot of factories that were doing this, and uh, but sadly, they kept on doing it. So what do you do when you see a blue beehive mark and you think it's a Royal Vienna plate? Well, nine times out of ten, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not. So if you don't know Royal Vienna, if you're not well versed in collecting Royal Vienna, and basically short of an expert, do not buy it. Nine times out of 10 on the internet, dealers are selling anything with a blue beehive mark as Royal Vienna. I see these portrait plates selling for hundreds upon hundreds upon hundreds of dollars, if not sometimes even a thousand dollars, and they claim that it's Royal Vienna. Now here's how to tell. For example, this is a pseudo Royal Vienna blue beehive mark. You see uh, like a, a maker's uh, logo over here. Well, Royal Vienna never did that. So here's some clues. If the base marks include the words Royal Vienna, it's not from the Vienna factory at all. It's a fake. If the base marks include the words Austria, it is not from the Vienna factory. If the base marks include the words Germany or Czechoslovakia, it is not authentic. Vienna has never been in Czechoslovakia. If base marks include the words Vienna or Wien, W-I-E-N, Sometimes they even spell it wrong and spell it W-E-I-N, which was a place actually in Vienna. It's not from Royal Vienna's factory. If there is any importer's mark or other company mark, it is not authentic Royal Vienna. So for example, this porcelain company put their actual logo mark with the beehive and sometimes it'll say Royal Vienna on it. It's wrong. It's not the real deal. So be careful out there if you're trying to start a collection of these plates. Be careful of these pseudo beehive marks.
So on the back of my plate, it has absolutely no markings whatsoever. So that means that mine was made before 1891. My guess is it's probably made about 1890, maybe 1889, like around there. Now, sadly, there is no mark, but it is European, that's for sure. So I wanted to show you um, also the different kinds you'll find. So this particular one is transfer wear. And there was hand-painted ones and there was transfer wear. Now, the hand-painted portraits are always going to be worth more. But this one is a combination of transfer wear and hand-painting. So if you look, actually, at the flower in her hair, it has raised beads and that was the hand painting and the flowers were hand painted but some of the parts of the picture were actually stamped on here and printed so if you notice thousands of little dots teeny tiny little dots of color that means you have a transfer wear picture and it wasn't hand painted if you see brush strokes like over here or raised bumpy painting then your your uh, illustration or your portrait was actually hand painted. Now, if you look in the top part of her bun, you'll see the little dots I'm talking about. It's very hard to uh, show you, but you can see those little dots there. If you look very, very closely, that's how tiny they are. So that was definitely like a transfer wear picture mixed with a little bit of hand painting, which they did to sort of give it the look that it was hand painted. Now, another way to tell if something's transfer wear Look at this uh, gold gild cartouches going up and underneath the maroon stripe in the center. That was stamped. That was not freehanded or hand painted. Same thing with the uh, flowers going in the middle of the maroon stripe. That was actually not free painted or free handed. So that's also uh, transfer wear. Now up here, this is hand painted. So it's a combination of both. Now, generally, these plates don't sell for very much money unless they came from one of the better makers like Royal Vienna, Meissen, um, Dresden. It's like uh, really subjective. Limoges made some really good ones, but the earlier Limoges ones are the better ones. I mean, if you get ones from 1900 and on, the quality goes downhill. Now, um, I'm trying to think like generally a plate like this. On eBay, things sell for way less than, say, on rubylane.com, which has more of an upper-class customer or clientele shopping there. And uh, I'm not insulting if you shop on eBay. I shop on eBay, too. But um, so something like this on eBay would sell anywhere between $30 to maybe $50. On Ruby Lane, probably anywhere between $75 to $125. So it's really subjective. It's It depends on if somebody just loves it and loves the item so much, they'll pay whatever they're willing to pay just to have it. So sometimes value really means nothing. Now I'm gonna show you another version of a plate like this, but one that was later and uh, was made after the McKinley Tariff Tax Act was made. And this one looks really, really gorgeous, but the quality is not there. Now this one happens to be an American plate. This one, was probably made after 1912 or so. So if you look in the center of the illustration, that is completely um, transfer wear, including the cartouches going around in gold gilding. You can see um, this is not free freehanded, and there's the dots. Now, if you notice, the dots are much worse than the other plate. So as time moved on and the decades moved on, the quality of these plates really, really waned and got much worse. So you would have more of a product like this. Now they tried to make it look much fancier by framing it in this beautiful, beautiful um, brass, gold, um, like ormolu, filigree type of uh, frame. So let me turn it around and show you something. So if you look on the back, it says Made in USA. So if it just said USA, it would have generally probably been from about 1891 to about maybe 1910 or so. But this is telling me that this is probably after 1912 or so with the maiden. So those are always later plates. Now, I can't tell who the maker is. Um, I'm trying to make out what the stamp says. But uh, generally, this is not a really good plate. It's not um, 
made like the Royal Viennas or the Meissen type of plates. So this pretty much uh, sums up um, these type of plates. Now, a lot of times, some, some people actually frame these after the fact. I do see a lot of these portrait plates framed in really, really pretty gold gilded frames and they look gorgeous. And uh, they actually, that adds to the value when you see these in frames, like a, a frame like this or a wooden frame that's round. You see that a lot of times. And uh, that always, like, like I said, it adds value. But again, these plates um, really aren't seeing much of a demand right now because there's so many on the internet right now. It's actually flooded with these type of plates. They will go up in value as they become scarcer. And there's more uh, of these plates getting broken. So once again, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. And I hope uh, you had fun learning about portrait china plates today. So long.